Wow, this is pretty cool. Yeah, Andreas, I told you, you, you can't make so much time. <laughs> well, no, this is, the tr this is the practice question. I didn't know there were so many people playing. Uh, we were expecting it to top out at 50, apparently. Um, yeah. It's really cool. It's really, really cool. <laughs> and, and now we have to wait a minute and a half yes. um, until everybody who has signed up to to play. So, so this is this is this is very similar to the lightning network. It's kind of like a DOS attack, right? You just don't answer and everybody has to wait. It's like not following a payment and waiting for the TLC channel. Well, ironically, I'm going to turn the volume down a bit. Um, yes, these questions do not automatically proceed until everybody has answered, uh, unless I hit skip. Also, by the way, Lightning Network is not spelled that way. So the red answer, don't worry, it's not a trick question. It's just a <laughs> stupid typo. Um, so I'm ready to skip this question. Are you ready to skip this question, Renee? Is everybody ready to go to some real questions? The next ones are timed. What we see is 113 correct questions, uh, correct answers. Um, six people who picked Lying Nakamoto as the name of uh, LN, uh, one latency never and one lovely nerds. Um, and so that's how Kahoot works and we are ready. We are ready to go. I really love how quick the answers are flowing and this is so cool. It's so much fun. 14 seconds, hurry up everybody. Okay, we do want a bit of uh, drama with the music, that helps. <laughs> and so we have 67 people picked Satoshi as the currency unit of lightning. Uh, I guess that was more of a uh, trick question than I thought. Um, Bitcoin <laughs> is correct uh, because in general the currency is Bitcoin. The unit itself is actually milli Satoshi. Uh, only nine people got that uh, absolutely correct. Lightning uses fractional values of a Satoshi divided by 1000 in order to give us even more granularity. Uh, and of course, Lightning Coin is um, incorrect, uh, but something that you will hear detractors say. Very good. Congratulations to those of you who answered both quickly and correctly. Should we read the questions? To pay someone in the Lightning Network, you must have a channel connecting to them. True or false? This one was a rapid fire question. Um, false is the correct answer. You do not need to have a channel connecting to the destination of your payment. Um, you can pay via a series of payment channels between you and others that eventually lead to your destination. You don't need to have a direct channel to everybody you want to pay. Oh, that was too quick. Now we didn't see the leaderboard, but next question we can do that. The Lightning Network can be used to scale the usage of... <laughs> I see Andreas is like starting to like the music. <laughs> I would love to hear it. Oh, finally. Excellent. People uh, got this uh, very well. Um, Bitcoin, of course, but also cryptocurrencies that have specific capabilities that can do time locks, that can do... Um, 
that don't have transaction malleability issues uh, that can resolve hashes? So now the main question is, did people get this correct because they learned it in your stream right now, or did they knew it before? Well, I mean, that's OK. Uh, you can learn it at any point in time. We oh, have, sure. oh, look at this. Satsman is the highest climber um, up 99 places, and our leader is still EE. Renee, are you playing in the background as EE? No, I'm not playing in the okay, background. Okay. I, I considered doing that, but I, I decided not to. <laughs> OK. Uh, listen, the following people are not allowed to play this. Me, Renee. Lalo Stalken, Christian Decker, <laughs> Satoshi Joseph Boone, <laughs> Satoshi Nakamoto, and Taj Dreija. You are not allowed to play if you invented or are currently working on <laughs> this technology. True or false? To make a payment on the Lightning Network, the sender must find a path of payment channels to the recipient. The sender must find a path of payment channels to the recipient. Yes, I'm going to read the next question. <laughs> we have to we have to mix that up. <laughs> you already get the bounty of the music. We have 50-50 chance, that's true. Oh, <laughs> people want me to show my hands in the camera to see that I'm not playing. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah, I can do that. Yes, the sender must find a path of payment channels to the recipient. This is called source routing um, and is the mechanism that is currently used. It's not the only possible way to do routing on the Lightning Network, but because it gives us some privacy advantages as well as other advantages, it is currently what is used in the Lightning Network. The sender constructs a path, in fact, several paths, and then keeps <laughs> trying them until they succeed. Um, all right, this is going well. I'm very excited. And people are already praising us for the questions. So yeah, this is cool. True so I'm or showing false? my hands. Each intermediary lightning node chooses which channel to forward a payment through. Show hands, show hands. <laughs> show of hands, I'm not, I'm not uh, playing this. <laughs> We did play it several several times over the past couple oh, of yeah, days, just, just to make sure it worked. It's working better than I expected. Each intermediary lightning node chooses which channel to forward a payment through. Um, the correct answer is false. It's not the intermediary lightning nodes. It's the same as the, the question we just answered, which is, it is the source that decides which channels uh, things get forwarded to in advance by creating the entire path from source to destination by adding channels together. Um, the source is responsible for finding that path. The source specifies that path. And, um, you know, one of the reasons the intermediary nodes don't get to choose which channel to forward the payment on is because they don't know where it's going. Um, they have no idea who the final destination is, so they have no way of deciding what channels might work to get to that destination. They receive a path, they simply follow the instructions of that path, and that path is defined by the sender. Uh, so. That's the answer. Well, I have to say those people those people who have answered true might have thought about LND because in LND if you have parallel channels the node can actually switch the channel if it's the same destination. It, um, it, if you have two channels to the same peer yes. and and um, one has been selected but the other one also goes in the same direction, yes. Yes, but that's a very yes. narrow um, kind of answer. And that's, and, and that's not really like part of the protocol. I mean, LND is just like allowing that. Okay, people, you have to up your game because EE is currently um, winning this. Um, eight players have now reached an answer streak of four. Question yeah, number seven. Yet. <laughs> so this is a multi-select. Remember, after you make your selection, you have to click submit, otherwise you lose your streak or anything. To receive so a to lightning receive... payment, you must. Yeah, 
By the way, you can't you know? just play this by picking all of the answers. <laughs> yeah, so we see that the submissions are coming in much uh, slower. Nice. You must have cool. an open channel to receive a lightning payment. You must have sufficient remote balance while we're talking about the inbound liquidity. You must be online. There's a little asterisk on that with some circumstances, but not a trick question. And you do not need to pay a fee. Um, senders pay fees in Lightning just like they do in Bitcoin, not recipients. This is not some kind of crappy cell phone business from the 1990s where you have to pay to receive a call. We stopped doing that. <laughs> All right. Um, that was question number eight. Seven players have reached answer streak five. EE is still winning this game. Um, let's see. I wonder who EE is. I have, I have a feeling. Why is onion routing being used on the Lightning Network? Oh, so people are actually reading the questions. The answers are not flowing in so quickly. <laughs> yes. Which is good. I mean, it's long answers. You can tell which questions come from me when you see the long answers. Why is onion routing being used on the Lightning Network to increase the privacy of sender and receiver recipients? The onion routing is where each hop through the network um, is encrypted so that only the node intended for that hop gets to see it. And all they can see is where it came from and where it's going. They're immediate neighbors. They can't see the original source and final destination of a payment. They only see which channel it's coming in from, which channel it's going out on. Um, and that's all the information they have. And this obviously creates, uh, this is by the way, the same thing that's used in Tor. Uh, Tor, the onion routing network um, uses onion routing. So the Onion Router uses Onion Routing and the Lightning Network uses Onion Routing, not the exact same. It uses a protocol called Sphinx, which is a slight variation of the protocol used in Tor. Uh, but again, it's a mechanism for privacy. This is going pretty well. I think people are uh, actually doing very well with these questions. Oh, this, this race is going to be tough, but um, ca some catching oh, up. A lot of things can change. A lot of things can change. This is worth two points. <laughs> really? Did you make this a two point question? It's a double, it's a double points question because it's a harder question and a more so technical that, question. Let's hope that E got really distracted. Somebody in the chat asked E to be distracted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How many people got this? How many On people the this? Lightning Network, payments fail if the size of the HTLC exceeds the balance of a channel along the path is the correct answer, the blue answer. 46 Whoa, people got 46. that correct. Very, very oh, good job. Um, and. Eight people were discussing Bitcoin blocks. Funny. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we get a new, new leader board. <laughs> EE has been unseated. Um, things, are, things. Are, oh, I like seven drachma. Uh, drachma was the currency of Greece before joining the European Union. Uh, is it is it biased if I back seven drachma for winner now? <laughs> Just because I don't know. I, I think he actually answered. Um, not on this on purpose <laughs> oh maybe he, he yes was, that, to, that, to that is quite the audience <laughs> that is quite possible um okay uh pixel 2 is the highest climber up 33 places true or false if we split the payment into multiple parts they all have to go along the same route <laughs> Thank you. 
Andreas, I really like that you uh, agreed to do the Kahoot. I oh, think I'm... it's really a fun thing. False. Payments that are split into multiple parts do not go along the same path. And this is the reason we They have... do not have to. I mean, they can. They, they can. can. But for the most part, you don't want them going along the same path. Um, primarily no, I mean, because them. if it's the exact same path, what's the point? Uh, in fact, what you're doing is you're increasing all of the overheads. Um, and most people That's got this one. the base fee several times. Yeah. Um, so the whole point of <laughs> splitting payments in multi parts is so those payments can be multi path. Uh, that's why the technology is called multi path payments um, or atomic multi path. All right. Um, I hope you're having as much fun as I am. By the way, um, not only was this Renee's idea, but Renee did a lot of work coming up with these questions and it's just some of the great educational material that Renee uh, is providing. And if you really like what Renee is doing, uh, Renee has a Patreon, patreon.com slash Renee Picard. Uh, and uh, you can go and contribute as little as $1 a month uh, to help Renee with his pure education mission. All of the work he does is open source, available for free, and uh, he uh, makes it available and will appreciate your support in his educational mission. All of that information is also uh, right below in the video description. Uh, you can find it uh, in case you can't spell Rene Picard, which I recently discovered I can't, uh, and I forgot the H. Um, Patreon.com slash Rene Picard with an H. Um, make sure you spell it right. All right. Uh, yeah, you, can also find it, you can also find it below my YouTube videos. I mean, usually I link it there. Let's do this. Question 11, true or false? Payment attempts leak information about channel balances. I'm excited about this one. I actually like the fact that when you when you discuss if the answer is right or wrong, Andreas, that we can't see the result yet because our Images yes. are there. <laughs> it kind of creates even more tension. Yes, it is true. Payment attempts leak information about channel balances. And uh, Renee talked about that during the live stream um, with an attack called probing, where you um, make a payment attempt, uh, perhaps even a circular one that you don't intend to fulfill, and you keep increasing the amount to see uh, when it stops getting through a specific channel, and then you know. Uh, you've reached the limit of that channel, which means you know what the balance is. Uh, so that's called channel probing. Um, and let's see how many people got this right. Oh, this one was wow. tough. This, uh, the majority wow. of people got this right, uh, got this wrong. Uh, wow. Payment attempts, in fact, wow. do leak. I wonder if this has changed the leaderboard again. But this um, must have changed the leaderboard. It's, uh, yeah, th these are not, <laughs> yeah, these are not easy. Um, these are not easy questions. Manchester West is making a comeback with three in a row. True or false? Bigger payments have a higher success probability. I might do cahoots on more live streams. I'm telling you, this, this is quite addictive and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> People seem to be enjoying it. Um, my but producer, it's also a lot of work to prepare. yeah, my producer in the background and my camera operator are both bopping to the music. The crew <laughs> is liking this. Bigger payments have a higher success probability is false. In fact, um, one of the early criticisms of the Lightning Network was a paper that said the Lightning Network does not work for big payments. 
Um, it should have been titled The Lightning Network, which was designed to enable small payments on a network that already handles big payments, cannot do big payments, well, big da. <laughs> But that wasn't the title they chose. Most people got this. Great job. Great job. Um, oh, we really have a camera problem. I'm holding up two thumbs and <laughs> nobody can see it. <laughs> but I will do it afterwards again. True or false? Lightning wallets are hot wallets. This is only 10 seconds. Hurry up, everyone. Oh, yeah, that's tricky. It was an easy question, so that's why I made it short. You have to race for that one. Lightning wallets are hot wallets. And the correct answer is true. 70 out Nothing of 80 got it. it. Mm -hmm. um, there's not much to discuss there. Yes, lightning wallets are hot wallets. What does that mean? I guess we could discuss it. Um, hot wallets because the keys are held by the software that is online. They cannot be called wallets. Uh, some people were asking in the chat, why are there no uh, Lightning hardware wallets? Um, and the reason is because Lightning is a real-time online protocol, meaning that your node or wallet needs to be able to sign commitment transactions for routing. It needs to be able to sign transactions for funding and closing channels. Um, and it needs to be able to manage keys for HTLCs, all of which requires the keys to be online in the hands of the software that's running your Lightning node at all times. So it's either a custodial wallet where somebody else has the keys and you have a lightweight interface. I generally don't prefer those, but there are a few custodial Lightning wallets. Or it's a non-custodial wallet where you're running a Lightning wallet uh, with the keys and a rudimentary node. Um, and in that case, it is a hot wallet. Okay, let's progress. Things are getting hard. 14, rebalancing channels can be done via Andreas, do you think I should make the game a little bit more difficult by confusing the audience when the questions and the answer possibilities are I mean, <laughs> listen, I think it's already hard, honestly. Oh, yeah, I think so too. I, I a lot of questions only get about two-thirds of the audience or maybe half the audience answering. Yeah, but that shows actually how important it is that we're writing the book. Yeah. We need to get that knowledge out. So rebalancing channels can be done via a circular payment or an atomic swap. Both of those answers are correct. And in fact, we see that uh, most people got a circular payment that we talked about. And an atomic swap was also a correct answer. A SegWit transaction, um, you know, strictly speaking, you can rebalance a channel by doing a SegWit transaction by effectively closing the channel and then reopening a channel, but then you're not rebalancing the channel. You're you're just yeah, it's a new channel. A it gets new a short channel ID. And the Gossip Protocol is kind of involved, but again, as I've said before, don't overthink <laughs> this. We're not trying to trick you. By the way, if you're having a delay, um, if you're having a delay in the oops. Where'd it go? If you're having a delay in your YouTube stream, and as a result, by the time you see the question, there's only a few seconds left, and it's not really working for you, and you are playing the worst game of Kahoot entirely through no fault of your own, due to the uh, pernicious impact of the Illuminati having taken over YouTube and trying to mess with your Kahoot game, um, refresh your browser, so that you can, um, and I think if you click on the live icon, it will progress the stream to the very most recent frame. Um, we are streaming this at ultra low latency, otherwise this game really wouldn't work. By the time you saw the question, it would already be out of time. Um, but still, if you're having some latency, this is not a fun game to play. Uh, try refreshing your YouTube stream. 
Okay, let's look at the so leaderboard. EE e e e revealed on the chat that he or she is from Australia. That could actually uh, also reveal why there's a lot of points in the beginning. <laughs> yes. And I promise you, Seven Drachma isn't me playing on my laptop. Because um, Seven <laughs> Drachma is the now the leader. Combo Breaker, four players just dropped their answer streak of four uh, with that last question. Uh, it broke oh, the streak. Oof. <laughs> so he says no, he or she's not rusty. <laughs> Question 15, true or false? The Lightning Network is the only possible scaling solution. Let's see. That's almost like a, how should I say, common sense question, right? Is it? Or are you a shit coiner? <laughs> I mean, I was saying this after basically all the answers were already in, but I mean, this is so obvious. False. The Lightning Network is not the only possible scaling solution, and um, 113 yeah, was... of you got the answer correct. Um, now, what other scaling solutions are there? Um, well, obviously, oh, bigger, well, I mean, bigger blocks. I mean, that's that is a, a, a scaling solution. It's a matter of how yeah. much how much of a price do you pay for decentralization. But with the Lightning Network and bigger blocks, you might actually get a multiplier effect. I'm not entirely opposed to making blocks slightly bigger. Yeah, but that's more like better performance, not really scaling. Scaling yeah. means that you can drastically increase. So I don't know. Right. Right. So scaling is about... I, mean, I, I know what you're saying, right? So yeah. yes, of course, we could make blocks bigger and maybe that happens, but it's... it's, it's Listen, I'm just, I'm just trying to make sure that if I am getting um, hateful comments in the YouTube channel, it's not about the chickens, but it's about something substantive like the big block debate. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, what oh, other, what other what scaling so solutions? Um, optimizations of yeah. signatures with things like Schnorr signatures, optimizations of um, scripts with uh, TapScript and Taproot. Uh, all of those are actually um, also scaling um, solutions and they feed on each other. So um, those scaling solutions make even lightning payments more efficient and uh, make um, channel opening and closing transactions smaller, which means you can do more with lightning. So. It's not about one silver bullet here. It's about lots of different solutions working together. But you all knew that. Well, at least 113 of you did. There's also side chains. And um, one thing that I think gets underestimated, custodial services in general are also some form of scaling the technology, right? Also not in the best way. Similar how big blocks would not be the best way, but I mean, they're scaling. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, next question. Double points on this question. HTLC stands for. <laughs> I love this one. So I guess we have 90% correct on this one. Yeah. You already see it, right? 90%? Oh, no. <laughs> well, not 90%, but 90 answers. <laughs> 90 answers. How good. Not yes. 90%. Hash time-locked <laughs> contract. But I, I did make all of these plausible. I mean, heterogeneous transitive logarithm cryptography is definitely not a thing. Um, but it could be. It could be. Um, it sounds at least cryptographic. <laughs> it, it sounds broadly cryptographic. And um, and it's the kind of really crappy acronym that an engineer would design, of which we have plenty in in our industry. So yeah. Go seven drachma. Make the Greeks proud. 17 questions to prevent cheating. Lightning wallets can get help from. <laughs> We 
should have put the answer Andreas on the name. <laughs> Could get help from Andreas on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. I already get enough. Thanks like for people, that. yeah, people contact me and they say, um, "I have a channel with you that's stuck. Can you close it for me?" Because, yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's almost something that you have to fulfill, right? <laughs> Very good. Watchtowers is the correct answer. Watchdogs was close, but not. Oracles are something that mostly operates in Ethereum, but in a way, Watchtowers are kind of Oracle. Um, and Referees um, is a great... Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Yes. So, so, so referees is actually, I mean, I, I would not have selected this as a correct answer, but there is actually a referee on the Lightning Network. Yes, yes, is, indeed. Who is, is the referee? The Bitcoin blockchain. That's oh, sorry, the Bitcoin yeah. blockchain. If you the have Bitcoin a dispute, is... your transaction goes to the judge and jury of the Bitcoin blockchain. And, and the miners, and they're going to settle it because the contract was defined in code and there's no doubt about how to read it. Right. And there's your referee, right? So, so yeah. sending a commitment or penalty transaction to the Bitcoin blockchain is how you get your referee. Um, yeah. Although that wasn't a correct answer in this particular case. All right. Um, let's see. Oh. Oh, the oh. king is dead. Long live the king, King Singh. <laughs> King is back. <laughs> I, I also like that Vim88 is making a comeback with three in a row. But the real question is, Vim88, can you exit? Will this be enough? <laughs> <laughs> Will this... Oh, yeah, can... <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Colon, yeah, sorry. WQ, my friends. All right. That's a, that's a very inside joke. I'm actually I'm actually surprised that people chose like reasonable nicknames and not like crazy stuff. So Thank you God. can't receive a lightning payment if you have no inbound channels. True or false? Andreas, how are you coping with the music nowadays? Oh, I, I'm getting used to it now. I, I like kind of the arcade. 1980s aesthetic of it. I think I think when you really play it, it's actually really like getting a vibe. You can't receive a lightning payment if you have no inbound channels. The only kind of trick question, if you ask me. It it feels a bit like a trick question now that I think of it, and so I my apologies to 37 of you who felt tricked. Uh, that was yeah. not my intention. Um, what I should have said is if you have no inbound capacity, um, but yeah, all right. Oh no, the I, I killed the king. <laughs> tricky question. Well, it's not question it's not 19 me. for double points. Lightning oh, needed yeah. segwit because of. That's a good one. This might be a new kingmaker. Or this queenmaker. Or it At might be what makes Rasputin more, king. At least it's one of the more technical questions. It is a more technical question. And it's not a trick question, but it is a bit more technical and it's got double points. So show, show the results before we discuss them, please. All right. Not so what bad. I wonder is what I wonder is if 69 people can actually explain what transaction mailability is and why we needed it to be fixed in the Lightning Network. I I doubt it. Um, it took me quite a while to figure out that. Um, yeah, so that was I actually had a t-shirt I... in 2013, I had a t-shirt made which said on the front, what the fuck, transaction malleability. That's when, <laughs> <laughs> that's when empty Gox was brought down by transaction malleability attacks. Um, yeah, do you wanna, do you wanna try explaining it quickly? Why? Well, actually why? people, actually people on the chat are quite good. So yes. one person is like raises his hand and another person says, it's because it can't chain unconfirmed transactions. And that's exactly the reason. Yes. Um, so, so, but maybe for those people who don't understand this, we elaborate what this means. 
So mm-hmm. when you open a payment channel, you send Bitcoin to a two out of two multi-six. So let's say I open a payment channel with Andreas. Andreas has a public key. I have a public key. And we send Bitcoin to that address. And now we have to make sure, or I have to make sure that if Andreas stops talking to me, I get reimbursed. So I need a refund transaction. Right, because it's a two bit- of two multi-sig. So if I disappear, you only have one of the two signatures, not enough to get the money back. <laughs> not enough to get the money back. Yes, exactly. Not even a single Satoshi. And so, I could blackmail you. I could be like, listen, that's it. I'm walking away. Which you would never do. Which, which you would I would never, never do. do. But um, that's, a, that's a type yes. of attack that is envisioned um, in these types of systems. Yes, exactly. So what we do is that we create a transaction that spends from the funding transaction and sends the money back to me. And only if I see that transaction and I have, if I have access to that transaction, I will publish the funding transaction. And this and is we, what we was both, meant. We both sign the refund transaction yes. before you even sign the funding transaction. And that guarantees yes. that you know you've got your exit already planned before you get into the contract. Um, by the way, good advice in business to always have the exit planned before you sign the contract or have the exit in the contract. So. Why is transaction malleability a problem? Well, the refund transaction um, spends the outputs created by the funding transaction and therefore contains its transaction ID um, and is bound to that transaction ID. If there was transaction malleability, um, the attacker could basically malleate the funding transaction and broadcast it uh, while you're still holding it and uh, invalidate the refund transaction before you even have a chance. And that would... So may, may, yeah. May, may I just add one tiny technical detail? Because I think there was this tiny error here. Oh, yeah, for so, sure. So, 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 so you said that the funding transaction is not uh, signed. Like you don't sign the funding transaction before you get the refund transaction. Mm-hmm. But that's not true. Because the exact thing is, you need the signature on the funding transaction to compute the transaction hash. Oh, right. Yes. And you so spend it is from that transaction hash. It, it is signed, signed. you but just it's don't not publish it. Yes. Because indeed. mailability is exactly what you do is you modify the signature in a way that it's still a valid signature. And this also changes the transaction hash. Very good. Right. Yes. So excellent, yeah. excellent explanation. Let's move on because we have five oh, yeah. more Sorry. questions and we're already and we're over time. two hours and 10 minutes into this and people are like wtf cahooters can we finish this damn game <laughs> oh, oh he, is back. he is coming back <laughs> look at that with a, with a double point question awesome <laughs> and he promised this <laughs> True or false? Nodes can censor lightning payments based on sender or recipient. All right. Um, any one of you got it correct? The correct answer is false. The intermediate sensors, uh, the et- intermediary nodes cannot censor lightning payments based on sender or recipient. They don't know who the sender and recipient is. That's the whole reason for the onion routing. And that means that <laughs> um, prior restraint censorship of transactions on the lightning uh, network. Uh, prior I, restraint- I love, I love. I love Doug Parker on the chat who says 37 people explain yourselves because honestly, maybe these 37 people know something that we both don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, I mean, to the best of our knowledge, right? <laughs> but maybe they can. All right, let's see what's find. happening here. Oh, things are getting tight at the top. Oh, yes, very tight. Especially place two and three is very close. True or false? A lightning private channel is completely invisible to anyone except the two endpoints. A lightning private channel. So 
So thanks, Andreas, for showing the Patreon. Oh, you're very welcome. It's uh, already people signed up. So thanks to those wow. people who now became Patreons. That's really, really cool Thank and you. helpful. There were people before actually saying that they were missing my videos. And one reason was is that the Patreon thing didn't work and I had to work on the book. And, you know, it's just like it's work. You, you know it. I mean, you do yep. many videos every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is work for sure. Um, all right. False is the correct answer. And this was not a trick question, but it is a subtle point. Uh, this trip top 81 people. A lightning private channel was completely invisible to anyone except the two endpoints. Let's explain why this is not the case. In fact, in the book, um, we have under the glossary as well as in chapters three, four, and five explanations of this very, very important point. And we say, a private channel is a misnomer, uh, and we call them unannounced channels. And the reason is that even though the channel is private and unannounced, you are still leaving footprints behind. The existence of the channel is known to everyone because its funding transaction is broadcast onto the Bitcoin blockchain, and its closing transaction is also eventually broadcast onto the Bitcoin blockchain. Also, when people are using that private channel to complete a route, they may be told about it in so-called routing hints, meaning that as part of, hey, you can pay me and here's a channel you didn't know about, an unannounced channel that you should include in your path, that routing hint can be embedded in an invoice. Um, and that means that a sender who constructs that path, who is not a, the endpoint of the channel, knows about that channel because they see it in the routing hints. So it's important to realize that just because we call it a private channel doesn't mean that in fact it is completely private. Um, and so I should, I, should, I should say that I opened an issue on the Lightning RFC about this um, and it's issue 675. Um, and you can look it up, the discussion there. Uh, I didn't discover this. I'm Wait, you opened questions. an issue to have it renamed from private channel to <laughs> unannounced channel or something? No, um, what, what I opened an issue is I said the short channel ID of channels should be random for private channels. So that when you see the short channel ID in the invoice, you can't look up the funding transaction on the blockchain. Because short channel... Great point. Right? So, so the short channel ID specific, specifies um, um, UTXO on the blockchain. And when I see an invoice like this, I'm like, yep, now I know how big the channel is. And I know the Bitcoin address is related to that channel. I know everything. Thank you. I have right. a private channel and all that information leaks. So, yes. That's a much um, more useful issue. Um, when, when you said I opened an issue on the RFC, I thought that your issue was going to be one of those, actually, a private channel isn't really private, <laughs> which isn't so, helpful so, so actually, at all. So it's, so it's funny, I opened that issue over one year ago, and it's still not fixed. Rusty was very quick to actually draft something in the um, RFC and the pull request, and then it became a huge discussion, and people were like, yeah, it's tricky, it's complicated, and currently it's kind of like burrowed. So yeah. um, as, as before, technology always has its subtleties. <laughs> Three questions to go. Let's do this. We can finish before the half hour. Oh, yeah. There was a change in rankings. <laughs> Oof. Question 22 for double points. Bolt stands for... I wonder how this will turn out. That's, to be honest, the only question that I actually answered wrong. Yes, in our practice session, people, Rene answered this one incorrectly. And in fact, it is one of those things that I really enjoy pointing out to people in a super pedantic way. They're like, <laughs> Bolt means basics of lightning technology. And I'm like, actually, 
Um, <laughs> oof! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Wow. This one wow. destroyed wow. the rankings. I bet. Oh my gosh! Oh, oh no! Oh my gosh! But so many okay. people chose the yellow one, the Bitcoin over Lightning technology, which is. I mean, it's pretty good, right? Bitcoin over Lightning technology. <laughs> it's it's awesome. like voice over IP. Um, hey, maybe maybe we should open another pull request and say we name the bolts to Bitcoin over Lightning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what are the bolts? The bolts are a series of specifications. So on the internet we have RFCs. In Bitcoin we have BIPs, BIPs, Bitcoin Improvement Proposals. In Lightning, the interoperability standards and specifications which you can find at lightning-rfc on github are basis not basics uh, everybody thinks it's basics well most people think it's basics it's basis as in the foundation the basis of lightning technology and these are highly technical documents that describe not just what everything is but exactly how it works and are the basis for interoperability testing and uh, interoperability work between the three or four major uh, Lightning clients that exist out there. Uh, Lightning is a very heterogeneous development environment, or at least much more heterogeneous than Bitcoin. There are clients written in, in Go, in, in C, in Rust, um, and in Scala. And so um, they all interoperate, more or less, uh, based on the specifications and the basis of Lightning Technology documents. Okay, are you ready to see how the rankings worked? I, actually funny. It's actually I think so, really some people are currently cursing both you, your name and my name, Renee. Ooh! <laughs> v for Vendetta. Okay. I don't know if that was the reason for the name. Three players <laughs> just dropped their answer streak. Yeah, and I bet they did. All right, um, and I think we are down to the last two questions, and the last one is just All a right. poll. So it's really, this is the last question that you can get points on. People, this it's is the last question you can get points on. Oh, that means we have a winner, actually. The faster you well, answer double correctly, the better your chance of winning this. This could make or break it. Go. The Lightning Network white paper was written by. So that's actually Googleable in, in the short time. <laughs> if you want to try. I only said it for, I think, 10 seconds, didn't I? Or 20 seconds? All right, 28 people. That's, wow. a, that's a pretty broad distribution. That's a pretty broad distribution. Um, Joseph Poon and Taz Dreiger wrote the Lightning Network paper in 2015, was it? Um, although a lot of the other names you will recognize from the Bitcoin community, from core developers, from developers in uh, Lightning. Uh, Lao Luo Shitaken, of course, is our co-author for the book, the CTO of Lightning Labs. And uh, Lao Lu and Christian Decker have actually written papers together um, about various forms of channel construction. Uh, Christian Decker is um, one of the most prolific uh, minds in the Lightning Network space. Uh, Peter Wool and Gregory Maxwell are well-known veteran core developers um, and uh, recognized as some of the uh, most skilled people in Bitcoin Core. Vladimir Vandalan and Matt Corallo. Vladimir Vandalan is the maintainer of Bitcoin Core um, and Matt Corallo uh, has done an enormous amount of work, including uh, not least on uh, Bitcoin relay protocols between miners um, and a number of other networking related infrastructure in Bitcoin. So some very well known names and prolific developers here. All right, uh, let's see what that did to the leaderboard. Oh, it's not showing the leaderboard because you first have to answer, how much fun was this game? Okay, you get no points, but there is clearly only one correct answer here. <laughs> All you can do is hurt our feelings. 
and I would not recommend that. I guess I can't see it. <laughs> uh, I know. Oh, percentages. Very good. 3% um, said, yuck, what a waste of time. 6% said, meh, it was OK. 17% uh, said, good, I learned something. And 73% said, great, lots of fun and learning. And the correct answer, of course, was yuck, what a waste of time. Um, <laughs> And everybody lost their winning streaks and points. <laughs> is everybody uh, happy to go see the final results? Let's see. Here comes the podium. In third position, Senf with 18,000 points. In second position, Seven Drachma. And our winner in first position, Americus! Wow, congratulations, congratulations. What a fun game that was. Thank you all uh, for participating. Let's uh, celebrate those winners. They get uh, nothing. They get nothing. Oh, they get... Uh, they get the satisfaction game. and applause from Renee and me. A job well done. That was not an easy quiz. There was lots of changes in the leaderboard, but I think we all learned something and had fun. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and share. All my work is shared for free. So if you want to support it, join me on Patreon.